Yeah, you feel, uh, I think you feel the time more in the first one because the animation is a little bit more mature. It's more serious. This yeah. one, it's more straight to video. And it's like, oh, you know, 200 BC. <laughs> Look at how bright it is. And it's like, no, it's not. All right, and we are here again and we are back again. As always, I'm Matt. I'm Drew. And this is the sequel podcast. This is where we kind of break down movies from the past and see if they need to exist or not. Uh, we're currently doing Disney animated sequels, and boy, oh boy, do we have a good episode for you today. Drew, what movie were we blessed uh, in watching today? We are watching Mulan 2, which actually I think is the first movie we're watching that does not have a subtitle. Oh, okay. It's just Mulan 2. It's just Mulan. Short, short sweet, and to the point. Yeah, so Mulan 2 starts uh, where it, there's like kind of some smoke and stuff, and like we're telling the story of like old China, and we reveal that Mushu, uh, not played by Eddie Murphy this time around, we just found that out. <laughs> so Mushu is now a ghost spirit, and there's like rank in there to where he can, you know, just live a life of luxury. He no longer has to be like a servant. He's almost treated as like a god or whatever. After we kind of get that out of the way, so Mulan's training the girls, and Li Shang shows up. And uh, basically he proposes to her um, after they've been dating a month. And uh, I believe they haven't kissed yet because this is, what What time is this? This is 200, what we, is it? Yeah, for reference, it is sometime between 200 BC and 200 AD, <laughs> which I honestly thought, I gave it the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was like, you know, 1200s, 1100s. Yeah. But no, we're, we're back there. So um, Mulan's really excited that she gets to marry Li Shang, uh, but Mushu finds out that if this marriage takes place, that he's going to lose his spot because he's like the ghost of Mulan, but if, Li Shang comes in, then he's going to lose the ghost spot. So he's got a whole now mission to go stop uh, Li Shang and Mulan's relationship. That was really lazy. I'll tighten it up just a little bit. I'll get I'll get the wrench in there. Uh, so uh, Mushu is essentially out of a job because uh, Li Shang's uh, ancestors and guardian dragons would, uh, in effect, take over his job. So Mulan's happy uh, that she's getting married to Li Shang. And then they get a message from the emperor. They go to the emperor. Uh, the emperor tells him that he needs them to transfer three of his daughters to another place where they're going to another kingdom where they're going to join an alliance with that kingdom. And the way we make an alliance is we have the three daughters marry uh, three of their princes or something like that. Now Mulan feels kind of you know not you know kosher about this because her whole thing is like uh uh and uh which is very progressive for what was that time frame again 200 uh we'll just kind of average out and say it was zero <laughs> we'll say it was the year zero it was the year zero so they agree to do the transfer because at the end of the day there's a war coming well that's the thing is it's, it's just kind of like a, it's a vague threat i don't think they say a war i think they just say the threat of invasion so they go to the, before we go on the road with the girls, uh, Li Shang and Mulan kind of, kind of have to get their crew. So we pick up our original crew from the first one, uh, the three bandits, they're singing about, you know, uh, getting a girl, a girl worth fighting for, whatever. Then we get on the road, uh, obviously the three daughters start to fall in love with the three soldiers, while in the meantime, Mushu is just trying really hard to separate Mulan and Li Shang so that he can, you know, get the ghost job back. And um, so here's how I'll kind of break down the rest of the movie after we've, because once we get on the road, um, basically hijinks, 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 Mushu doing something, Mulan and Li Shang arguing, falling in love scene, a musical number, along the way some bandits attack, and then uh, Li Shang dies. So Mulan goes to the New Kingdom uh, with the girls and without Li Shang. Mulan just uh, trades herself. She says, leave the girls alone because the girls want to have their own life. They sing a song about having their own life. Um, so she's like, let them go and I'll marry this guy because I just lost the love of my life. So I don't have any, you know, I got no love to give. Yeah, uh, he agrees because she's like a war hero and she's like, I don't know. They have like a whole aside where she's like another jewel in his crown. So then uh, Li Shang shows up, he's alive. He tries to stop the marriage. They're able to get away with this uh, because Mushu goes into uh, the dragon mouth. He, 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 originally he was against this marriage, but then there's a scene somewhere in act two where 
him and Mulan. Uh, Mulan finds out that Mushu has been doing all this stuff behind her back and trying to separate Li Shang and Mulan, and she gets really mad at him. So he makes it up to her at the end by jumping in this kind of like statue of a dragon's mouth, which all the folk believe is like, you know, their god or whatever. And he starts talking and they all bow for it. And then he allows Mulan to marry uh, Li Shang and uh, I believe just happily ever after, <laughs> after that. And uh, so I don't really know. That was the quickest plot synopsis <laughs> we have done so far. And I don't know, there's a lot of stuff we missed that I do want to go back and kind of circle around. Well, let me just, uh, if I can start with this. The plot of this movie was getting three daughters to go uh, marry three princesses so we could form an alliance. At the end of the movie, nobody marries the prince. So is the alliance still on? I, I guess I don't want to talk about this specifically. Let's go ahead and talk about plot. Because plot, plot is very interesting. If you open up on our B plot, which is very mm -hmm. unique for a storytelling mechanism, where it's literally just setting up Mushu, who likes his job now. He's going to be out of that job if uh, Li Shang marries Mulan. So he's got to, we've got to establish the hijinks that's going to be playing in the background, which is he's going to try to break them up. But the plot doesn't really kick in for a while. And it's when uh, the messenger comes and summons them for their little escort mission. Yeah, I remember you literally, as soon as that guy rode on the horse, you literally said out loud, you're like, oh, looks like the plot's, uh, looks yeah. like the plot's coming in. Uh, like finally too, because yeah. I was, I was, I don't know, I guess it wasn't like horribly timed, but I was getting antsy for some plot. To kind of organize this a little bit, I'm going to just start off by saying some things that work in the movie. Because there's a lot of things that don't work in the movie that I think we want to kind of get into and talk about. Oh, you want to just go ahead and do things that do work? Yeah, let's okay. just do things that do work to knock it off. I like aspects of Li Shang and Mulan's relationship, the fact that they're kind of equals now, the fact that they, you know, they they are partners in, on the side quest together. You know, she's gotten a lot of respects in saving the war. I like the fact that she gets recognition well, for I saving think... the war. And I like the fact that at the end of the song, Girl with Fighting For, it ends on Mulan because that's the girl, that's how they kind of built their ideology. Is like that's why they want girls of their own is because they like Mulan. I also think some of the musical numbers work. I like the opening one with Mulan where she's talking with the girls, even though they're doing all that. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it was I don't know. It was a lot of like nothing happening, but it, it was engaging. Yeah, it was, it was entertaining. It was entertaining. Yeah. Um, I like when Li Shang is about to die. There's a shot where she's holding on to him, and even though this is like a sequel, so they kind of they don't really let anything kind of sit. There's just a moment where it just is actually kind of serious for a second. And I think that's everything that I, that I think works, that the movie does well or that works in the movie or that I like in the movie. There was not a lot I liked in this movie. Um, I will say, I think I, I agree with everything you said, but there's not much else. All right, so let's dive into what we want to talk about now, which is like the problems we have with this movie. And uh, you can kind of jump in whatever. I'll just say, I like the song that the three sisters sing. Um, I just don't like the execution of it. I like what it represents. I like how they feel about it. But the song itself and the lyrics are just very kind of, it's almost like they're just saying sentences. Like none of the words rhyme. They're just kind of talking. Talking in rhythm. <laughs> they're like, I want to be a girl because they can do stuff. It's like, that didn't, that didn't rhyme. You can't, <laughs> you know, so. I don't, another thing I don't think that works in this movie is the themes of gender. And it's really interesting because they spend a lot of time having conversations about it. And now you can make the argument that having these conversations in themselves is what the theme is. But, you know, the first Mulan is her just doing stuff. We're showing everyone what it is. We don't need to kind of spell it out. Whereas in this movie, we literally have Mulan talking to camera and saying like, you can be anything you want to be. She's talking to another girl. She's like, you have to follow your heart. Well, that's in our read. That's in our reference where I said uh, we were watching it and she was literally just spelling out the themes of the first movie. And that's what the themes are for this movie. Yeah. It's just done to a more extreme degree. Yeah. And that and that's and there's nothing different. It's literally the theme so nice that they did it twice. Exactly. <laughs> the biggest thing that doesn't work for me about this movie, and we'll just kind of see where this goes, is the main plot, which is we've got a it's it's the kingdom of Qui Gong, and the whole thing is uh, the Mongols are massing at the border. We're not going to engage them in open warfare. We're going to form a treaty and we're going to keep them back that way. Well, I'm initially intrigued because that was very interesting for uh, for a Disney plot. Well, for, oh, yeah. So the plot originally, it sounds like interesting at the top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was initially on board because it's an adventure. You know, it's, it's an escort quest. You know, like it's almost like an archetype that you can boil down. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like, okay, like we know what's going to happen almost. We know we know the beats we got to hit. So let's strap in and let's like check this out. And then like you said, it like quickly becomes a rom-com where mm -hmm. I, like I thought I was going to get like uh, like an escort, you know, an escort quest or something like that. Something where there would be more of a threat than just Eddie Murphy's hijinks. 
not Eddie Murphy. You know, the miscommunication in the first one is the fact that we have to kind of lie about our gender. In this one, the miscommunication is all dependent on our characters kind of becoming stupid and kind of buying into the noise around them. They all fall for Mushu's tricks. They're not like almost strong enough uh, against that kind of thing, which just seemed kind of like a contradiction to the last movie. Exactly. The other thing that like, because after we established the rom-com stuff and we like, okay, the daughters are going to fall for these soldiers now and they're not going to end up marrying the princess and there's going to be drama because of that. You know, the treaty's in jeopardy. That's the main plot. I never felt the treaty was in jeopardy. Well, that's what they're establishing when they're having these daughters fall for the guards. But like, that's what's happening. That, that's why that's there. It's like, oh shit, now, you know, the, the Mongols are going to attack because we're not unified. Um, but the other thing that's happening is Mushu is, uh, he wrecks the cart. And he really makes this escort mission like very dangerous. What's interesting about Mushu wrecking the cart is uh, when that cart gets destroyed, it feels like a natural point in the story where things need to get worse. And I felt like th there just could have been a, a more natural way that that cart got destroyed opposed to Mushu. But Mushu's really only there to kind of make us move backwards. Whereas in if something was relevant to the plot, like if another group of bandits that were actually part of the, the people trying to attack, if they were the ones that encountered the princess and that's how they ruined the cart and then they have to fight them to get forward. Like, you could use things from the plot to to your plot. But, but we just use Mushu. But we just use Mushu instead. And it's it, it's a thing that's like repetitive with Mushu because it's in the first movie as well. And this threw me for a loop. I love the first movie, first except, for, except for there's, there's one thing where, like a major plot hinge is that Mushu sends the training soldiers to war uh, just so he can get clout with the, with the ancestor spirits. And he's endangering all of these like unprepared soldiers' lives so that Mulan can get like, you know, Cloud as a war hero. Yeah. And it's very like, that's not something a good character does. No, Mushu is a very selfish character. Yeah. He really doesn't care about anyone but himself. And I really, like you really, like I really think like just watching like kind of like stuff that happens with Aladdin and I'm kind of like, wow, Genie's kind of like a reckless character at some points. Mushu is so reckless where it almost borders on like antagonistic tendencies. So I don't really think we have anything else we want to talk about with this movie. So we can kind of just start getting into the ranking of it. So as always, the first question is, does it work as a sequel? I don't know if you want to go first. I'll go first. No, it does not work as a sequel. It is, this honestly might be the worst offense. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 this might be the least sequel of the ones that we have done so far, just because it is so hollow. It is just so bare bones rehashing a theme and a scenario that, like I said, doesn't hold up under scrutiny and just doesn't care to try to make it work. Yeah, I don't think it works as a sequel either. So that's two X's. So the next question is, is it enjoyable slash entertaining? So oddly enough, even though I just voted that this doesn't work as a sequel, I do think that uh, it is somewhat enjoyable and entertaining. Even though I have problems with it, like I said, there are elements to it that kind of keep you engaged throughout the whole thing. I don't think it does. Well, you said earlier that it's kind of like hollow, but unfortunately, like it's it's very colorful on the surface. So I feel like it's entertaining and enjoyable for a kid. And there's little sprinkles of things in there that kind of work. Um, so I, yeah, I, I only give it a check mark because it's like, I'm gonna I'm going to give it praise for where I'm gonna give it praise even if I'm gonna shit on it for you know shitting on as much as I am. Where it had the interesting ideas like Atlantis did, I just don't think the, it, it wasn't enough to hold up the whole movie like it was in Atlantis's case. So that's why you don't think it's enjoyable or entertaining? Yeah. Yeah. So the third one uh, is does it need to exist? Um, nope. <laughs> I don't think it needs to exist either. So that's gonna be two quick X's there. So that's five X's and one check. So that's going to be an X across the board with an asterisk next to it with some of the stuff that I was saying, whereas in there's certain like conversations and there's certain musical numbers and just interesting things that keep you engaged. They don't execute or pay off those things good enough, but they still keep you along enough to kind of, you know, worth kind of watching a little bit. But unfortunately, it's still a big X. <laughs> um, so that's going to be our breakdown slash kind of critique review of Mulan 2. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was that enjoyable to watch. It was definitely more on the lower rank uh, for us. Thanks so much for listening. As always, uh, subscribe, like, feel free to comment on anything we missed. Feel, tell us what you think about Mulan 2 if you've been unfortunate enough to see it. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next one.
Oh, Mulan is very progressive for the year zero. She's upset right now because of uh, arranged marriages. Just wait till she finds out that they can't vote. It's gonna, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs>